Okay, no, this isn't what's ruining your videos. This is just a Sony 1 to 400 millimeter lens, quite a nice telephoto, um, but it's actually close ups that might be ruining your videos, or more specifically, improper use of close ups could be ruining your videos. What we're talking about when we talk about close ups is just how much of your object and or subject fills the frame. So in the case of a close up, it's a lot. It fills a lot of the frame. And I wanna be crystal clear here that close ups does not necessarily mean long lens shots because you can shoot a close up on an ultra wide lens. Hello? And you can also get a wide shot on a long lens like this. In filmmaking, the camera functions as your audience. So, Dave, can I borrow your hair? Yes. So when you're shooting a close-up, you might as well be grabbing your audience by the head and saying, look at this. Okay, I see it. This is important. But what you often find, especially in a poorly planned sequence, is that every single action gets played out with wide, medium, close, wide, medium, Close, wide, medium, close. And these types of shots and sequences can be absolutely fine, but the real key to quality visual storytelling is knowing when to implement them and when to just hold back and keep things simple. Where are my keys? One really powerful way that you can use close-ups in your videos is to give your audience an insight that perhaps your character has not yet been made aware of. So a simple example would be like a close-up of a bee walking into someone's shoe right away. You're like, uh-oh, they're gonna get stung. It's kind of like those old Final Destination movies where you see a leaky gas line and maybe they're trying to light a cigarette and it builds tension. So while it doesn't always need to be about building tension in your film, it can still be a really cool way to make the audience feel more engaged with your videos. Oh, darn it. Sometimes the use of a close-up isn't so much about a creative decision as much as it is about a practical decision. So if there's an important bit of information that is too small to be shown in a medium or a wide, then you just need to cut tight. So when the gas light goes on in my vehicle telling me it's time to pull over, we just need a close-up to make that bit of information known. And that brings us to the sponsor of today's video, which is the fine folks over at Storyblocks. Storyblocks is the go-to resource when it comes to getting great high quality stock footage, sound effects, after effects templates, graphic elements, all sorts of these visual elements that can just help spice up your edits. Storyblocks have well over 1 million digital assets and they are adding to this constantly. And that means you've got over a million different ways to improve your videos. I had to find out the hard way that my van, in fact, does not have a gas light. And that means when we were filming this sequence, we dove right into Storyblocks, found a nice close-up of the fuel cluster, and we made our own in order to tell this story in a way we just couldn't have done without them. So if you want to learn more, click the link down in the description or head over to www.storyblocks.com slash jessedriftwood to find out more. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Another good way to use close-ups is as a form of visual punctuation. It functions as a transitional shot, letting your audience know that the scene we were just in is now over. It's important to remember that while we do spend a lot of time talking about the do's and don'ts of filmmaking, that can feel overwhelming and sometimes you really do just need to follow your gut and do what feels right. So far in this video, we spent a lot of time talking about narrative filmmaking and the rules that apply there. And while you can take those same rules and apply them to really any style of video you're making, it's also important to know that there are loads of styles of videos that just this won't be as important. For example, over the last two months, we've spent most of our days here in Evil Empire building out our new shipping container offices and so we've been documenting that whole process. And while we don't know yet what the edit is going to look like or how those shots are gonna get used, we've made a point of always getting what's known as coverage. That means 
basically every action gets a wide, a medium, and a tight. And we do that not because we are going to use the wide, medium, tight of every single action, but because when the time comes to edit it, we wanna have as many options as possible. And the same thing here applies if you're shooting weddings, documentary, if you're even just being sent out as a shooter for someone else's project, it's often important to spend more time just focusing on getting quality coverage than it is on imparting your own idea of what shots are important and what shots aren't important. The final point here I wanted to talk about is using close-ups in order to convey texture. And that texture is sometimes for maybe a product video showcasing the materials. And obviously you need to get close in order to show that off. And sometimes it's in order to invoke emotions. So if you imagine the steam rising off of a cup of coffee, cutting to that can actually give the sense of warmth and comfort that your character might be feeling from that coffee in a way that just a wide may not fully convey. It can also impart a sense of intrigue to your viewer because sometimes you get into those texture shots and it's like, oh, what am I looking at here? What is yet to be revealed in the sequence? By the way, we put out a whole video on sequence building uh, a little bit recently, so you might wanna check that out. And we've got those future build out videos coming. So if you're interested in seeing that, subscribe, follow along for more. We like to teach filmmaking. We like to test products. So that's what you'll find here on this YouTube channel. Thank you, Storyblocks and Dave. Thank you, Dave. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna go. My parents are bringing my kids back and I want to hang out with them. So uh, see you tomorrow morning. See you then. Dave, have you seen my keys? Nope.